Hey, how's it going? It's Andrew Grillos. Uh, this evening I'm going to tie my Superior Spruce Moth pattern for you guys. It's a fly that came out just a couple years ago. Uh, I've been working on it for a few years prior to that. The Spruce Moth's kind of an interesting one. It seems like it's gained a lot of popularity in the last five to ten years as far as a hatch to look for. Uh, they're a pretty big deal here in southwest Montana. Most fly shops stock some variation of the pattern. Um, as far as how it travels elsewhere, I think it's a big deal on a few places in Colorado. Uh, I was told it's a pretty good hatch to hit on the Conejos River down in southern Colorado, almost to New Mexico. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of other places that are just not on my radar. Uh, again, it uses a bunch of foam and synthetic materials. Um, kind of a hackle wrapped over a foam underbody, a few different techniques that I don't use in other flies that I tie. So again, with all my videos, I hope you pick up some techniques that you can use in your own tying. Don't just try to duplicate a fly, try to learn the techniques so you can apply them to your own creations. Uh, again, this is going to be my superior spruce moth. Hope you guys enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Alright, so I've got a finished superior spruce moth in my vise right here. Uh, so, there's the finished product. I'm going to pop this guy out, and we'll get after it. Let's tie one up. So the hook that I like to tie this on is the good old Tiemco 3761. I do a great deal of tying on this hook. I really like it. Uh, it's a little bit heavier wire, so you can pull on fish a little bit harder. Uh, so I think it's 1x or 2x long. Yeah, 1x long. Um, so it's just like a, I don't know, it's a really solid foundation. Uh, since I use a lot of synthetics in my fly tying as well, I can get away with tying on a little bit heavier hook like this. Um, so. That's it right there, right, I'll show you, that's that Jamco. Uh, for this fly I do it in a size 12 through 16, I'm going to do a 12 because it's a little bit easier to demonstrate a larger fly on camera, but uh, feel free to scale it down to a 14 or a 16. So first step with most of my fly tying, I'm going to begin by laying down a nice tight thread base here. That just gives all of our other materials a solid foundation to grab a hold of. The thread that I'm using for this as well is a 10 aught Vivas. This is kind of a cream color. Uh, pretty much anything lighter, whether it's a uh, gray, tan, this kind of cream color. I think those all look pretty good for this fly. So maybe one more turn there. That should get us pretty darn close to the barb of the hook. We've got that foundation. So the first step here is to tie in a kind of undersized saddle hackle. Uh, this is kind of a cream, kind of light color. Um, so. What I want here is about equal to, if not a little bit less than, the hook gap. This one's pretty close to the hook gap, but it'll work. Uh, so I'm going to take these first few little fibers and s cut them off, right? If you've seen some of my other videos, I mentioned this. By cutting those fibers off and leaving those little tag ends on there, that gives your thread a little something extra to bite into. If you just go ahead and strip those off of there, uh, it's less likely to... Uh, stay put, right? If that fly, that hackle could come out otherwise. And like I've always said, durability is a big thing in my fly tying. I hate when flies fall apart. So we've got that body hackle in there. Next step, this is a one millimeter tan foam. I've cut into a pretty thin strip, about half the width of the hook gap. I'm going to go ahead and tie this guy in. I'm going to cut it to just a little angle there so it's a little bit less bulky when I tie it in. About like that. Just want to tie this all the way down to right next to where that hackle is tied in at. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and advance my thread forward to about two-thirds of the way up the hook shank. My next step here is to wrap this foam around the body. Uh, and again, I tie on a rotary vise. This is a Dynaking Excalibur. I really like tying on this guy. So instead of wrapping my material around the hook, I'm actually going to rotate the hook and just kind of guide my material onto it. So, and just kind of slightly overlap these wraps. And what you can do here as well is apply a little more tension on it at first and then ease off of the tension. And that'll allow you to build up a bit of a tapered underbody here. You can also wrap them a little bit more densely as well. Unfortunately, by rotating the hook like that, we also end up building up thread there, so you'll see me undo the wraps that I put into it. 
So that looks pretty good right there. That's a little bit farther than two-thirds. That's probably closer to three-quarters of the way up the hook shank. I'm going to go ahead and tie off that foam underbody and make a few wraps back to just secure it down to closer to where I want it to end. Go ahead and cut the tag end of that foam. Right, so you can see there we've got that foam body there. Uh, that's a pretty uniform diameter, I would say. You could try to build it up and have a bit more of a taper, uh, or just do it like I did there. Either way is fine. And now I'm going to take this hackle and I'm going to follow the seam that I created by wrapping that foam. And that just kind of gives that hackle a little groove to follow. And with this one, the hackle's actually facing forward, right? There's kind of a convex and concave side to it. This one's facing forward right now. I'm not super picky about the orientation of the hackle on this fly. I'm okay if these fibers are angled slightly forward, like you can see they are. There we go. Good. So that's a nice, densely hackled little body there. I'm just undoing the wraps that I put into it there. Switch hands, and I'm going to go ahead and make one wrap to capture the hackle a second, and then a third with a fair amount of tension. And that hackle shouldn't be going anywhere. So I'm going to swipe those fibers out of the way and make just one wrap in front of them as well. Maybe a second. There we go. Now I'm going to cut that body hackle off. This is not that different than an elk hair caddis, how you've got that little hackle wrapped around the dubbed underbody on that guy. So my next step here is to add the sparkle that goes underneath the wing. This is pearl midge flash. I tie with this stuff a lot, as you can tell by how chewed up my little hank of midge flash is. I'm going to go ahead and pull about four strands out of there. And I'm going to wrap this around my thread. I'm not just going to tie it in by the ends like that. By doubling this over my thread, that allows me to secure the material in the center like that. And that, again, makes for a more durable fly. That flash is much less likely to pull out if you were to be, let's say, releasing a fish and you yanked on it or something. Good, one more wrap there. All right. So that flash is going to kind of hide under the wing, and that just gives the fish a good sparkle, you know, the fish looking up at the fly, maybe a little something to get their attention. I'm going to go ahead and cut this about just a little bit longer than the body there. And my next step here is to grab a piece of 2 millimeter foam, right? And I'm going to cut this about equal to the hook gap. And I'm also going to cut, you can see I've got that little point there. So I want that point to be just a little bit longer than the flash that we tied in. Something about like that. A little longer than the overall hook length, if you can see that there. And don't go straight to maximum tension when you're tying in this foam. Always remember, just kind of capture it with one slightly looser wrap. Make a second and then a third, and then you can start applying more tension to it. I'm just making sure it's positioned right where I want it on top of the fly. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to pull this front part out of the way and advance my thread almost to the eye. Not quite. You always want to leave yourself enough room to finish the fly. And then I'm just going to press it down there. Again, one kind of soft wrap to capture it. A second, I'm going to pinch it and apply more tension. Now I've created that little segment in there, you can see. This is not unlike my hippie stomper, how I've got the foam buried in there as well. What I'm going to do with this now is just take a number of wraps right around that to just kind of compress that foam. I don't really even want that little segment in there. I just want the little head or lip on the front, and I want the foam underwing. This is going to build up the underbody that we're going to wrap our hackle over in just a minute. That looks pretty good to me. Alright, so my next step with this guy at this point is to tie in the legs. I'm going to tie the legs on my side and on the far side. These are fine round rubber in that black and white barred color combo. Again, not unlike what I use in my Hippie Stomper. I'm just going to match them up so they're about the same length, right in the center. And I'm going to secure this along my side of the fly. I'll show you in just a moment. 
There we go. So you can see how that just follows along the body there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the fly. Just like that. And then just secure it right along the side of the body there. pretty good. You can adjust it just a little bit. You want those guys to be pretty much flat with the fly there. Alright, so my next step here is to tie in the elk hair wing. This is not that different than the wing you'd put on an elk hair caddis. It's about the same same size chunk. Uh, and I've gone ahead and stacked some already. So let me just stack it up a little bit more. Just tap it on my knuckle there. Check it. See how the tips are all pretty darn even there. Go ahead and pull it out of the hair stacker. And I want this wing to be about the same length as that foam body there. So I'm going to line up the tips with the end of the body, about like that, and then switch hands that are holding it. And take kind of a softer wrap. And then a little bit more tension. Just make sure I've got it positioned where I want before I kind of flare it. That looks good. So I'm going to apply a bit more tension. Nice thing about this, this is cow elk hair, actually from a cow elk that I shot with my bow about 18 years ago. I've still got an enormous chunk of the hide left that I use for my fly tying. Uh, this cow elk doesn't flare quite as much as, say, deer hair or something. See that? That's got a bunch of tension holding it in, and it didn't flare out like you would have if it was uh, a piece of deer. I'm going to advance my thread to kind of the front portion of this little segment that we've created. And tie down all of this hair again up here. Just kind of make sure to capture it about where I want. Apply more tension there. A little better. Good. Now I need to take a few more wraps back to there. And then it's a matter of burying all of this elk hair right in there. Pretty good. That's That segment in the middle is where we're going to wrap our front hackle in a moment. But first, I'm going to go ahead and trim all of these long tag ends. I want them to be about the same length as that foam head there, but I haven't trimmed that yet. So first, I'm going to trim the foam head. I want that to have a nice proportion, about like that guy. And then I'm going to trim the elk hair about the same length. Let's trim these strays up there. Okay, good enough. Alright, I also like to incorporate some sort of a little high visibility indicator in a lot of the flies that I tie. So for this guy, I'm going to use some of this hot pink McFlylon. I really like this McFlylon material. I use this in a great deal of my tying as well. Cut a little bit more manageable sized piece. And again, just like we did with that pearl midge flash earlier, let's tie this in by the center as opposed to the end. And then turn it back on itself, right? So there's one, I've captured it right in the center. Maybe I'll make a second wrap there. And then fold that pink uh, McFlylon back towards the back of the fly, and then capture it like that. There we go. Good, I like what I've got going there. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that indicator. I want that to be about three quarters the length of my wing. So about like that. Oop, missed a couple fibers in there. There we go, got it. Alright, and the last step here is to tie in the hackle, wrap it, and then uh, finish the fly off. So again, this is kind of a badger or cream colored, uh, this is a cape feather, right? This isn't the highest quality. You can see it's kind of a short feather, but it should be more than adequate for what I need to wrap in here. So, I'm going to go ahead and tie this feather in right back to that pink indicator, and then I'm going to advance my thread forward right up next to the front of the, the butts of that elk hair. I'm going to grab my hackle pliers here, because this feather's not super long, and just pinch the stem of it right up near the top there. And that'll make it a little bit easier to hold on to while we wrap this feather. There we go, and I'm going to actually spin the fly. And you want 
this to be nice and buoyant, the more hackle you can get in here, the better. So just try to use up as much of your feather as you can. I think I should be able to get a half a dozen turns of hackle in there. Good, that about does it there. I'm going to undo one or two wraps that I just put in. There we go, that's great. Just work your thread through that hackle and around some of the obstacles in the way there. Capture it. Make a second wrap to hold it in there nice and tight. That looks pretty good to me. Apply a little more tension and then finally pull everything out of the way. Try to work your thread in right behind the eye of the fly there. Make one, two, maybe three turns there. And then let's see if we can sneak a small whip finish in there. And again, with this whip finish, you don't need to do a whole bunch of wraps. If you can get three or four just good turns in there, that should be more than sufficient. That's great. Just about done. So now I'm going to cut my thread there, and then I just have to trim the tag end of that hackle feather on the front. You can see that guy right there. And the last step, I like to trim that hackle flat on the underside of the fly, just that front hackle there. So I'm going to turn it upside down so I can see what I'm working on a little better here. And just kind of come in from the front, take one, two, maybe a third snip, and just trim that front hackle so it's a little bit more flush. What that does is that just encourages the fly to, right, to ride right side up. Uh, and it also allows the fly to sit just a little tiny bit lower in the water. I think that gives the fish a little bit better look at the fly. So that's my superior spruce moth right there. Hope you guys learned a couple things from that. Uh, it's kind of like a caddis, but it's just a little bit more stubby profile, right? A little bit shorter and wider. A uh, whole bunch of buoyant materials going on here between the foam, the hackle, and the elk hair. A uh, little indicator to make it easy for you to see. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please check out some of my other ones as well. I'm trying to upload these about once a week if I can. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks a lot.